And welcome back, everybody, to series event number three of the Breakout Series presented by the Gundam Evolution New Type League. I'm EGP Wonderchef, joined again by James Jamerson Lee. And we're now about to move into our second match of the day, which will be our first decider as to who makes it into our day two winners finals. And it's going to be Mafty versus Satoris Esports. Yeah, this is the Breakout Series, but you might as well call it the Mafty Show at this point. And really, we didn't get to see as much of them because the first <laughs> match up against iron-blooded orphans of the day was an extremely fast 2-0 for them and so we'll see if satoris esports can maybe halt them just a little bit well okay so in the break i saw a lot of people in the chat you know a lot of these players that are within this tournament talking about how it is really tough right now to fight up against mafty because so many players that are great players have been shifting around teams which obviously we've seen a lot of now one thing about satoris is that they have had a relatively similar team over time in fact i think they only have one player different from last event and they have like eight players. So I don't even know if these players are technically going to be subs or if we're going to see them throughout the day. So overall, they are a very consistent team. They do well and they're improving over time like we tend to see with any of these teams that stick together. So I'm excited to see how they continue to grow and if they can put up a fight against Mafty just by being consistent, learning together as a team and then just having that synergy. No, I mean, we've seen, of course, kind of the effect this, these events, these competitions really do have upon um, not just the individual skill, but the team play, right? The team play is the most important thing. I think there's a lot to learn when you take a look at a team like Mafty, because while there are a lot of great individual players, it's their overall team play that really does win out in the day. Uh, agreed, completely agreed. But let's see uh, what I mean. Hey, the team play starts with maps, picks, and bands, right? Uh, being able to confidently know which maps you are strong on can really lead to a quick victory, like we saw in that last set. Obviously, we saw that Matthew was very comfortable with the close range maps. Looks like they are going to be banning out Corey, which I believe was the same ban that we saw first off the bat last time. Yeah, it was. And so they uh, have something against it in Satoris. We're, uh, I believe they must have been watching the match. And so <laughs> the first ban is going to be Thermal Plant for them. Hey, it makes sense. It makes sense. If you see that, you, you're like, oh, no, let's not go to Thermal Plant where we saw that quick uh, two 100% wins. And now we're going to be moving to Colony Trading Post. We saw it a lot more last time. I know you and I were excited to see more of it when it first came out, but finally we're seeing more of it. And then we're going to move into Underground Command Center. So two maps that have some wider open angles, certainly not the Domination Fest that we've seen before. Yeah, and so it's going to be a destruction fest instead. So we're we'll calling <laughs> trading posts and underground command center coming in. Really excited about that because they're they're you know um, especially with uh, that first uh, set uh, that first points mm -hmm. they do play kind of different for Flag Fort and Harbor City both getting banned out. That means our decider if it does go to a map three. Well, Mountain R and D is up, and so that's what's going to be picked. Well, we didn't see uh, the decider last time, but we might see it this time. We'll see. Uh, definitely, overall, it's going to be wider maps, like I said. No Harbor City, but still overall, even Mount R&D, despite the fact that it is a domination map, I would say that it has some of the wider open angles when you do fight on those longer ranges at A or C, taking that high ground. So we'll see now a pretty different set overall, I think, than uh, we were going to see. But now that we're not going to be on domination, the question for me is, are we going to see as much of these like death ball kind of comps that we've been seeing with the the gym as like a secondary shield on top of the Hyperion. Are we going to see these teams switch back to more of what they're used to with like longer range stuff, especially uh, the flexibility of Mafty? You know, they've got Arrow who has played a good amount of the RX-78. We've seen, uh, of course, Carl Sagan on the Sniper. There are a lot of different questions that we've got as far as how these comps will go, but we'll know as soon as they get started, we're going to go to a short break as these players get into the match, but we're going to go right back into it. So we'll be right back with game number one of this winner's semis match.
wanna cry. As we get into map number one here of our winners semifinals between Mafti and Taurus Esports, I want to give a huge thanks to Ursh, J Slay, Nostalgia, and especially Batty for those huge donations towards the Landfest. And uh, also a thank you to Chaotic for the $1 donation, which I guess is probably the uh, the best that a Barbados player can do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, but here we go. We're on Colony Trading Post, and I'm excited to see these comps. Yeah, and uh, nothing really changing that much in terms of composition. Focus, of course, is going to be on that Pale Rider, um, and we know ex how extremely strong it is for their offense. On the Satoris side, though, it looks like it is uh, fairly similar compositions, except for Coilovers and one Trick Tony. Um, are going to change things up just a little bit. Oh, wait, never mind, along with the Barbados. So three uh, units kind of uh, swapping around here. Now, they will have a lot of CC in that regard, and it's going to be really nice, especially for the Barbados on the defense when you're trying to defend those uh, points. I'm really excited to see the Unicorn plus Hyperion combo, the kind of double shield up, like just make your team invincible for a few seconds. But uh, we're currently on defense. I want to see that more on offense. And right now, though, we are going to see the Hyperion really be a part of this offense. Is there's quite a few players defending the waypoint. We tend to see a lot of these top teams kind of back up after the major push. But right now, it seems like there's a little bit of a commitment. Oh, there are a lot of people right here. Boondiggle's going to have to get out, oh. but not quite. Oh, safe, though. Yeah, but did you get to see the kind of control that they had on the side of Mafti with Carl Sagan and Profi, both of them getting the uh, both of them getting the AOEs down, actually just isolated a mountain. Even though they end up losing out on one, that's going to be Nox going down. Mafti are still able to push up. Now there are a few members still here on A for how long as Lol of Mafti are starting to push up now, getting onto Keicho, taking him low. They will go ahead and take him out and get the plant down on B. And focus just kind of sitting there waiting for the <laughs> health pack to come back. Oh, nice. This is uh, a great forward hold position, to be honest. Yeah, they've got the high ground here. It's going to be a difficult retake. And more difficult, oh. I would say, especially for the Barbados player on the store side. Boondiggles is going to have a difficult time trying to get up and close and personal with that Barbados here on that high ground. All six members have been spotted out here. And you can see now Ender's backing away, has his shield up, has spotted out the Barbados, and he's trying to close the distance. Oh, look at how many people are playing this inside corner. That makes it so hard. I mean, that could be a huge, though, from Royal Family. That could be a huge flame grenade, just throwing uh, one little thing into there, or maybe even a huge hyper hammer from the RX-78, but uh, they just are not quite able to find that. Yo, Profi almost goes down. There is a chance here. Boondiggles as well, though, going down on the defensive side, and now there's only about three of them left on point to try to make it one trick. Tony going down as well. This looks like this should be a first point. Explosion, unless there's somebody sneaking around. It looks like they're already pushing forward for that positioning. 
Oh man, Carl Satan, he's got the punch ready. He is winding it up and you can see how grouped up they are on the Satoris side. They are trying to back away and not get staggered. And so they at least get that. But you can see now, Carl Sagan charging forward. He doesn't need the punch really to finish things off. <laughs> Coilover is going down. And they're not going to overextend on this one. They're slowly taking it as they go forward. They know they have to play around a Barbados. So they don't want to overcommit onto these angles. They're going to check every corner before they go on in. This can be one of the toughest choke points on this map. We've seen it before. This can be the spot that people really get held because not only are you fighting for this choke point just to get through, but the, the relay is after it. So you are fighting for something that can be retaken if you get team wiped, even if you do get through. Uh, currently, we are seeing you know, even a strong team like Mafti have to spend a little bit more time than usual. Of course, they've got tons of time, four minutes and 10 seconds, but they know that they can't just push through or they are going to go down. But this is a great way to start with the Screaming Nimbus. Oh boy, but they end up losing out two on that. It is going to be a two for two exchange. And this fight, despite having so many G maneuvers for Team Mafty, isn't quite going their way. And now they will be able to at least force them back, possibly get the waypoint here. We'll see what uh, Nox can do. But in the face of two uh, repairs coming through, not going to be able to get much. And so that relay will get neutralized. The bomb plant has gone down on the B site, at least pulling away some members of Satoris, possibly creating an opening to get this waypoint. Blue Mingles will be sneaking back around. If there is a flank here from Barbados, this can be a very great Barbados spot. It can be very hard to actually confirm the kill on the suit just because it can sneak around these corners. And you're in there, we're seeing the corners being used the other way. Oh, wow, what a great positioning there from Profi, walking directly from Casino, just blocking every single shot out of that Ooh. clip. Boondiggles oh now ends gosh. up picking his G maneuver, and that's going to be three going down. And so, Mafti. Uh, despite having a very convincing point A or the first half of this map, they are struggling. Like you mentioned, the choke points here are so incredibly hard to play around. And now this is where Barbados is really, that's his playground. Uh, I, I am sad that we didn't get to see that triple kill with the G maneuver, or maybe I just missed it, but it happened so fast. Again, though, these ranges are all so perfect for that particular G maneuver. Uh, so we are going to see, oh, we're going to see a huge push here. Casino pushing in first a lot of the time, just taking a little bit of extra damage on that pretty high HP suit. But can they clear out Keicho here to get this plan? It looks like they're at least going to drive them back. Oh, but this is a great counter push. However, they're staggered and the bomb is down on A, a sneak plant. Yeah, so they do draw a lot of attention away. The bomb going down. It's going to allow Casino now to really play around these corners. Just spam them out. And we have the gym ultimate going down as well. Just trying to cut them off from this angle. And so they will have to try and approach maybe from the left-hand side. But they're going to go ahead and push forward with that screaming Nimbus. Try to get the follow-up. Profi stuck in the corner here. Never mind. You're <laughs> waiting for Hyperion ulti to send someone to the sky. That's going to be um, uh, the screaming Nimbus being utilized for that. But you can see now Keicho going in. He does get at least one, it seems like. But the hate is here. It's the counter screaming Nimbus as well. Coming out from Casino. 13 seconds. 12 now remaining for this mega charge and there's no Satoris members in sight. Oh, no Satoris members in sight because they are all currently respawning. Uh, that is exactly the way that you want to win a team fight like that. But Boon is going to be oh, an initial pick. However, nobody was close enough to get that contest. There was just no time left. That wipe was perfect. So much of that fight went down in that one little corridor where we saw the two G maneuvers. I don't care which team you're on. I think you just don't want to be in that little area during that fight. But Mafti, of course, coming out on top, getting a few more picks with their G maneuvers there and they did manage to get the uh, well because of how quickly they took the first point they had a decent amount of time left on this first uh, point but now we'll see how we can do on the attack on the other side like I said I'm really excited to see the uh, the combo of the, the Hyperion and the Unicorn yeah, overall, though, Satoris did kind of uh, bleed their timeout. I believe it came down to about a minute and 30. Yeah, one minute mm -hmm. and 26 seconds. So despite how quickly they ended up taking the first half of the map, uh, they were stalled out. Uh, Satoris did a great job, not over just fighting for the relay, but um, playing around those corridors and making the first mega charge plant extremely difficult. Now here on the defense, though, and we'll see if Satoris want to stick with Boondiggles on uh, that Barbados. They might have an easier time walking up on the offense than on the defense. Because you have to imagine, you know, on the defense, he did not have that much of an effect uh, for them. But this could be where Boondiggles shines.
Right. I mean, that was a great G maneuver that one particular time. Uh, but I just the way that Nafti pushes forward, you're, you're not able to flank them very easily. And we saw that in the last set, too, as well, where we had the Zaku 2 ranged player who essentially needed to switch off. Look how short it is. Look how short it is. The gun's resting on his head. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Sup, That's little you bro. Sup, little bro. Oh my God. Oh my all right. God. I mean, it's just it's all posture, right? I, I imagine <laughs> if he just sit, sits up, he'll like gain another, you know, two or three meters of height. But here we go. <laughs> it's going to be Satoris now on the offense, and it's very similar story to how Mafty tried to approach this one. Go for that relay on the left hand side. They have utilized a lot of their cooldowns, though. A lot of the CC is there. They're going to charge forward now with that shield, and they do end up finding one. That's going to be the Royal Fat Man taking out Casino. And Casino is typically not the first person to fall. And that is huge because he was already halfway towards his G maneuver. But it does look like they're going to take their time, get that relay, and now charge forward. Oh, these coordinated pushers look so strong. I mean, you do see that they are bleeding a lot of damage, but you can see the coordination between the shield from uh, really both of those big AoE support units, the Unicorn and the Hyperion. However, it does look like they're going to trade. Once again, Casino going down two times really quickly. Not something we're used to seeing out of Casino, but hey, if you get focused down, you don't have that much except for a big body and a lot of HP. Yeah, despite that, though, Satoris have not been able to get the Mega Charge plant down. Luckily for them, they've got that relay. That's going to be Nox going down. Excuse me, Focus going down. Enders will fall as well, and that is the opening that they were looking for. Boondickles trying to chase after this Exia, but will not be able to find it. You can see the stagger coming in from Mafty is still doing enough to try and delay them. Profi finds one onto Coils. He will get rezzed up, and now it's Carl Sagan being able to get that uh, knock and the finish on the cage show. So this scrappy fight coming up for Mafti is still delaying Satoris from getting the plants. Yeah, they're, they're getting so close, but Mafti is just coordinating just such a way where they're just never fully getting wiped. They're always going to leave like one or two people there available to stop the plant. And here we go. This is just a brawl here on the second level. Royal Fatman is going to fly in as well. One trick Tony, though, has a good amount of players around them. They are going to be able to heal up and use that shield. But this high ground going pretty much fully to Mafti. Oh, nice dodge from Profi to avoid that Boondiggle slam. And it looks like they are going to get that pick on Boondiggles and then be able to to move back, reposition. Yeah, it looks like uh, they're trying to opt for that uh, B site, but it's not quite working out for them. You can see Matthew were able to respond to that drop on down, and it becomes so incredibly hard to really try and play around these objectives, especially with the gym and Ashamar combo. I love having that, not just on the uh, domination maps, but the destruction maps. When you have to play around an objective, it's so incredibly strong. Now Nox looking for an angle here, but uh, doesn't look like anyone's gonna charge quite yet. He does get stunned up and immediately taken down. Royal Fat Man with a huge come up there once again. That Ashmar player for his squad. But we've seen it in the past. The Taurus finding the initial pick, but not able to get much, especially when Casino answers back. Royal Fat Man's been doing a lot of work, getting a lot of the picks overall on this team. Of course, it's usually with a lot of assists, but oh my gosh, just immediately getting melted. I didn't even see technically what did that damage. Oh, it was the G maneuver. I did not see where they were set up, but that of course doesn't do a ton of damage if you're not ready for uh, like turning a corner into it from that gym G maneuver. No one ever sees a G maneuver coming. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think you're safe. You think they're not going to home onto you anymore, but they will now. The G maneuver is coming out. So Taurus down to a minute left. They do end up picking up two, but this is such a difficult task for them. They utilize so many G maneuvers there just to crack things on open, and now they still need to defend the site. It's up here on the roof on A, and now Satoris. They actually uh, have three G maneuvers available, three strong ones as well. This is a great position for them. It, they've got the high ground. They're almost all regrouped. There is a little bit of a stagger on the side of Mafti. So they've got to wait a little bit more time before they get this one big push in. And realistically, they're only going to get one big push. There it is. They're pushing from basically the relay themselves. Although there's a little bit of a flank here. And of course, the screaming Nimbus from Casino getting one pick while Ender, or sorry, while, uh, oh, it's Carl Sagan gets the other pick. Oh my gosh, Casino with the tracking there. They will clean up almost everyone except for Royal Batman and get the Mega Charge. This arm now with only 10 seconds remaining. Satoris have to charge into the Hyperion G maneuver here. They're going to approach it the same way from that relay once again. Now we're just all eyes on Enders. Doesn't even matter. That's going to be Mafty shutting down Satoris on the first point.
Oh, yeah, that was really close. I mean, again, OK, so every single tournament with Mafti, I say this, right? There are I mean, that was a great like play from Satoris overall to to really, you know, to win that team fight, get the plant, get into the good positioning. But every single time that it looks like somebody is making Mafti bleed, they are the best at fighting back into it. Like it, it, there was, you know, there was not a lot of time left. They had a little bit of the stagger. The positioning was perfect on the side of Satoris. And Mafti's like, whatever, we just need, we, we saved our resources for this. We're okay with it. We're not going to panic. We're just going to push in, do our usual thing. And then we are going to take it back. And that's exactly what they do every single time, even on the example sites like that, that are really hard to take back. Once it's been planted, they have zero issues, just winning another team fight. And uh, then of course, holding them off at the first point. So a great showing from Mafti. I got to say though, so far though, I think a great showing from Satoris as well. Yeah, I mean, so Taurus did a great job, right? Uh, we got to see uh, the entirety of the map there, and um, they made Mafty work for it on that second half um, of um, Colin Trading Post at that point. We got to see why it's so difficult to push through those chokes, and despite not having as much AoE um, when it comes down to that uh, Jim and Ashmar combo, they were still able to utilize Ashmar extremely well uh, along with that Barbados, that constant threat of just being one shot from the combo there uh, kind of slowed things down a bit. And so despite not being able to get that first uh, mega charge up, they were able to get the plant down there. It was extremely close, but it did come down. So it's just a big G maneuver difference there in that final fight. Right, which uh, again, of course, is a thing that Mafti is just incredible at. But uh, honestly, they put up a great fight on both points. So, you know, one on offense, one on defense, but they weren't quite able to get it. Now, Taurus Esports is not out of it yet. They do have at least one more map in this set, which we'll be going to soon. We're going to take a short break as they get into it. But we'll be right back with game number two of Mafti versus Taurus Esports.
Underground Command Center, we map number two of Mafti versus Satoris Esports. Mafti currently up one game in the set, but we are going to see the shift back to Carl Sagan on that classic gym sniper. Oh, or maybe not. Maybe we're getting trolled. I would have been excited to see that. But uh, here we go. Sniper time, hopefully from both sides. Yeah, if he doesn't go for the gym sniper here, especially starting off on the offense, I would be extremely surprised. Royal Fat Man, though, will go out the gates with it, and you kind of have to. Uh, to try and keep uh, teams at bay. I mean, at this point, it could just be a handy camp <laughs> for Mappy <laughs> if they end up running Carl Sagan on a support unit instead of a, a, a DPS there. But there we go. He's going to go ahead and hover over that uh, gym sniper. And so we're, we are going to have the sniper battles. And oh, man, the things that we were seeing from Carl Sagan in the last tournament, it was absolutely disgusting. We might be able to see hints of that once again. You know, even if Carl Sagan did start on Methus, I feel confident that he could uh, probably lead the kills. You know, that's just the Carl Sagan way, but <laughs> a little tiny guy, a little tiny guy, the opposite of the, uh, the other take of the game. Uh, but yeah, of course, I'm so excited to see this sniping once again. Whoa, Fat Man, a uh, player that I feel like we haven't really got a chance to see the gym sniping skill from. And these sniper battles, always one of my favorite things to watch in these games. So here we go. Game number two. Yeah, I'm trying to remember, but I believe he was playing the Ashamar for them on the last mm -hmm. map. So there are some swap arounds for them. I feel like, uh, you know, you just got to put the most comfortable player on that gym sniper at that point to try and get the value. But it's going to be Mafty pushing all the way up to the relay and Royal Fat Man getting chased on down one <laughs> HP. That gym sniper getting absolutely nothing as Carl Sagan. He's got all the space in the world to work with, especially when Casino's on the front line with that Dom. It's going to be a clean sweep, basically, out of Mafty as they pick up stragglers in the back. Coilovers needs to survive here, but he ends up going down. Excuse me, that's going to be Boondiggles going down. And now four members running back, only two to try and defend the point. That's going to be an easy plant on site A for Team Mafty. Oof, yeah, the stagger here is tough. And look at this pre-positioning arrow, of course, on the Arc 78, which I'm so excited to see. One of my favorite suits to see still was already positioned at B to try to stop people that are moving up to the high ground and pushing back down. Same thing here we see from Casino and from Focus. This is a great, great positioning. Again, there's just no uh, hesitation when it comes to where these players want to be on the side of Mafty, but that's going to be two picks. Oh, wait, maybe one gets away, but I think Garmzabi and at least one other KHR will both going down and this is once again just a tough stagger with only about one third left on this mega charge timer yeah that was a great response from arrow the call out saying hey they're lower and he does instantly respond to that of course he can leave casino up top by himself now things are looking extremely difficult for satoris they might stagger here i mean there's only 10 seconds remaining uh for uh, basically this mega charge, so they're not going to be able to get it. They need to be able to back away. Nice res on Sugema, but they are still getting chased down. It's the rush down as they find one. That's going to be the re-knock uh, re onto Garma, and Mefti will go ahead and charge forward. Garma getting rest once more is actually the base as one trick Tony ends up taking off focus. Yeah, but focus being down is not going to hold them back that much. It doesn't look like they're maybe not going to push quite as hard. Arrow's low, Profi's low as well, but nice snipe out of the air. And that is not the most accurate gun in the world. So great shots from Profi. Yeah, Profi, again, part of that shield combo for Team Mafi have been doing an excellent job of just trading away who's going to be front end. I'm so sorry, but you are not hiding there, Boon Niggles. <laughs> as he gets spotted out, his giant mace just poking out from behind that cover. So now Mafi uh, securing that relay for themselves will try and charge forward, but a huge Ashmar punch coming out from Coilovers. He gives his life for it. There's the res is coming in, the repairs, excuse me, with the relay as well. And so now, Mafty will try and retake this height. Oh, yeah, that, I mean, that punch was so good, but they recovered from it so well. It just they weren't able to confirm any of those kills. It was just entirely downs. And uh, we're look at this. Boone is in the middle, just trying to run away from everybody. Going to get picked off. And once again, there's this huge stagger. And that's one of this has been basically been the story of <laughs> with mine landed on the ceiling. Bomb goes down on A. And once again, there's only about half the team of Satoris up. I really want to see them not push and just wait for the uh, the regroup. Carl Sagan ultimately does go down, and I feel like this might be the time, the opportunity for him to swap off. He is close to his G maneuver, but I mean, does it even matter? 40 seconds remaining now. The Mega Charge hasn't been touched quite yet. Too many members of Mafti are still here. Boondiggles tries to get on in, but he does not hit anything here. Now has to wait on that charge. 
and Profi will be able to chase him down. Enders finally does fall here as Royal Fat Man swaps off onto that Zaku 2 range. It's going to be too little, too late. 18 seconds, 17 now remaining here, and it's all Mafty on the kill feed. Oh, only a, okay. I mean, here we go. The screaming noise from Garmazabi is going to be a great opportunity. Keicho as well pushing in to try to get more survivability on that solo defender. We are going to see Profi go down, but so many again on the side of Satoris are going down at the same time, meaning nobody can get their hands on that mega charge and get that extra time. I got to say, I mean, okay. Satoris, they they managed to stop them a little bit, but Mafty, every single time we've seen them on this map on offense, it has felt to me like their strongest map. Every time they get to go here, they take point A immediately, they, or they take the relay immediately, point A immediately, and then they're pushing forward and stagger people on that second choke point, and then boom, it's just over. And that's just what we're seeing again. Yeah, their control is just excellent. I and mean, we got to see it there on the first half of the map of how well that they were able to play kind of uh, split up and different groups, different zones of control, right? Having Arrow along with Casino up top to really try and cut off that choke point, having a few members down below on to site A to make sure that, you know, all signs, uh, all uh, lines of sight were covered there and being able to beautifully respond when a push came out. So yeah, we're seeing the mastery come out for Mafty when it comes to this map and uh, this time around. Um, despite, you know, on the first map, they were brought down to what, about a minute and a half? They've gone and kind of doubled their time bank here with three minutes, essentially. And Carl Sagan, of course, having that confidence to literally never switch off of Sniper at all on this map. That's actually something that I've seen before. Since we've seen them play on this map so many times, it's clearly one of their comfort picks. Uh, I've currently, myself, when I play in ranked, sometimes I'll be like, you know what? I'll just try to just stick on Jim Sniper the entire time and we'll see if it works. If Carl Sagan can do it, I can do it too. And I definitely can't. But it's really cool to see like that level of confidence to stick with a suit that usually we see switched off of at some point in a map. Yeah, I mean, typically it's not the greatest to utilize in the second half of the map, but you can see how mm -hmm. that, there's that really large corridor um, in between the points. But you can see the sniper battles will be taking place once again. Mafty on their offense. We're basically just able to push up to the waypoint for free. So Taurus aren't going to have as easy of a job taking a lot of damage on the initial approach. Now Mafty do end up giving it away. And so that's going to be the high ground taken away from them or at least given up as Coilovers tries to find an angle. He's got to be careful. He's been sniped out of the sky before and he almost gets taken out there. Garma will be the first one to fall. That's going to be Carl Sagan taking him out. And so remember with that nerf that came to Dom Trooper, it is in one shot range, the headshot. Ooh, I don't know if that shot was at right there, but one trick Tony just barely staying alive here, trying to get the repair. It does look like they are going to be able to hold this relay. I don't think the counter push is going to be quite enough. However, oh, Profi is on point, and Profi has proven to be a very scary gym. We are seeing so much gym back in the meta. I'm very excited to see. Uh, however, finally going down, and this is honestly a great push. We usually see Matthew hold here for a long time, and now they're the ones getting staggered. Yeah, it's not over quite yet. Casino will ultimately fall. But the difference here for Mafty is they have about three, maybe four members still up to try and delay them at these choke points. And they do have that gym uh, burn going down. It was immediately cleared. And so they are dealing with that now. But Satoris, will they be able to find an angle in? There's three members on. KHO has his shield up and will try and charge forward. But Carl Sagan ends up finding one along with Casino. And that is no surprise whatsoever. Satoris need to back away. They cannot stagger here. They've already been delayed on that waypoint. They're already down to three minutes. Yeah, we are used to seeing uh, now this tournament uh, so far. We're used to seeing Enders on the Hyperion, but I'm so glad to see Enders back, of course, on the Pale Rider as well in a more defensive spot where maybe the defense doesn't matter quite as much. You don't need to be, you know, be pushing behind somebody. Uh, and we know that Enders is such a great shot. So really coming into play, especially in that fight right there. Well, Fat Man, though, trying to get a pick, trying to wait for somebody to sneak out just a little bit too far. And we are still seeing double gym sniper on both of these sides. Yeah, Royal Fat Man is close to his G maneuver, but I don't know if he's going to be able to build it up here quite yet. Focus ends up finding two, and now he might find a third as he tries to chase down Royal Fat Man. He does end up getting that heal pack, and he's got to be careful because he is, of course, just one headshot away from going down. But Focus will be able to win out on that duel, backs away. And now the Mega Charge does end up going down for Satoris, but do they really have anyone here to defend it? 
I can't believe Focus is still alive after that fight. That was uh, some really great mobility. Oh, there's the G maneuver. Oh, oh my gosh. Come on, even getting a pick on one Tony with the uh, Vulcan Cannon. That is a tough spot. That's for sure going to mean that there's only going to be one or two more major pushes on the side of Satoris. Minute 37 remaining. They got the wall hacks up as well for Carl Sagan. Won't really be able to utilize the other part of uh, that G maneuver, but still should be incredibly strong knowing where they're going to approach from. A minute, 20 seconds remaining now. Satoris needs to get that mega charge down once again, but Arrow is standing in their way. Stalwart is that RX-78-2. They do end up resing one here, and Carl Sagan will ultimately fall as Boondiggles finds his way into the back line. Arrow is here to try and answer back and rotate around, but these are huge staggers to Taurus now. Uh, they are down to basically one final push. Oh, oof. Yeah, Roll Fat Man getting back up, then going back down, then getting back up, and uh, yeah, this is a stagger. This is tough. Again, I really want to see them not push, especially with the fact that Carl Sagan is still sitting here on the gym sniper. You do not want to get out of position and get picked, and then you have to push a 5v6 for your final push. And it does look like they're playing a little bit slower. They're waiting for the respawn. A lot of them pushing around this side into the cave, and that could be a great choice. We're also seeing Roll Fat Man switch off onto the Zaku 2 ranged. Yeah, I think he just needs it, uh, needs it for the mobility to try and get there faster. There's a knock onto Coilovers as uh, Enders pops that Hades. G maneuvers being utilized as well. The Screaming Nimbus out from Casino, extremely low. He should be able to back away. No, he ends up falling here as he tries to corner one. They're going to charge forward now. Mega Charge is actually going down on A, but Profi is there to cut it off. 12 seconds remaining, and Mafti about to shut down Satoris once again. And with five seconds remaining, that's our first team going to the winner's finals. And that's, of course, going to be Team Mafti. Oof, that was an unnecessary long-range hyper hammer just to uh, add insult to injury at the end right there. But really amazing stuff as usual from Mafti. It's what we've come to expect. But again, I have to really highlight Satoris. I think that they did about as well as we've seen literally any other team do up against Mafti. You know, they've got they got the the plants. They got the, well, first they took the waypoint on offense very quickly, and then they got the plant, which was a very difficult thing to do there. But again, Mafti. They're always good at coming back. They're great at defusing. They're one of the best defusers. They're the best defusers that we have in the entire league, which is a weird thing to say, but you have to reposition for it, you know? It's kind of scary how good that they are at fighting a man down. I mean, there were multiple times where, you know, there would be a pick coming up from Satoris, and as they try to charge forward, there's, there might be small little errors in how they try to push up, and that's where Mafia are really able to take advantage. Find them a nice little flank, and I think it comes down to how kind of they fight in pods, right? Three man pods of killer whales, essentially, at this point, um, and how they approach a lot of these fights, and it's just amazing to see. Um, I, I know we've seen a lot of dominance, and we've got, uh, been able to see a lot of Mafti gameplay, but we're seeing a lot more of the nuance coming out from them now that we get to get a closer look and how they play. Yeah, and, you know, this is basically the last time we're going to really talk about them today, just because that does mean that they are now guaranteed to make it into the championship Sunday uh, top three spots. So I also want to point out that it's cool. It's so cool that we get to see the gym come back. Profi has been absolutely killing it on that gym. Uh, I, I had a discussion actually with our production, uh, or you know, our main, main production guy, Lux, uh, like two days ago, and I was like, I think gym still sucks. I think this this suit just did not get the help it needed. I do not think this it's going to be worth it. We're probably not going to see it in play. I was super wrong. Super wrong, but I love that I'm wrong. I was actually just in chat earlier too, talking about somebody, and they're like, does GM ever, GM ever see play? And I'm like, eh, not really. And uh, we've seen a lot lot of it today so i am super pumped about that yeah i think in particular it's just that he's not the flashiest right in terms of units mm -hmm. there are so many flashier units and kind of uh, understandable right because we're going from the oldest generation of gundam to like the newest generation where you have barbados and exia trans and their god mode whatever super saiyan <laughs> gundam at this point right <laughs> so they have the flash while jim just kind of shows up he's got his shield he throws down an aoe and you know maybe he shield bashes from time to time it's not the flashiest uh gameplay but it does end up having a huge effect with the kind of aoe you're able to control with both his basic abilities and his g maneuver well, I'm glad that we get to see it. It's one of, one of my favorite mobile suits personally, so uh, we'll see if we get to see it from some of these other teams. We're going to be moving on now to the bottom side of the winner's bracket, but we'll get to that when we come back. We're going to take a short break as we're going to set up, I believe it's going to be Tekka Dynasty versus Last Second. This might be my most anticipated match of the day, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this break.